Hey y'all, Patrick here today with Tomon's Guitars and Basses, and today we're talking about something I think really every bass player should have in the back of their head, and that is five ways to be prepared before you go into the studio to record songs. Now, whether you and your band are going to record in the home studio that the sound engineer has made themselves, or you're going to a full bona fide studio that's completely soundproof with state-of-the-art technology and everything on top of it that's a little much to take in at first, I think that all these tips that I'm gonna talk about today are something that can really help you be a more proficient bass player in the studio. First up, we have something that is absolutely detrimental to both your playing and the sound that you're gonna get overall, and that is Strings. Now, if you remember from the last video I made, we talked about the differences between round wound strings and flat wound strings. And of course, if you're using round wound strings over time, they get dual, they do not sound as good, and they also don't feel good either. So you need, absolutely need, to put a new set of strings on before you get to the studio. This way you can guarantee the best tone possible going into that recording process and making sure that you do not have to redub or go over anything again because your strings were dead and they did not sound good. And I don't know about you, but I would like my bass recordings to kind of sound the best that they can. So why not just go ahead and buy an extra set of strings, put them on your bass beforehand, make sure they're stretched out, make sure they're tuned up and ready to go. And that way you can, again, get that great tone from the start and not have to do anything over again. And just in case it is multiple sessions over eight or 10 hour days, depending on how much you're gonna be playing and recording in all that time, go ahead and bring an extra pack or two just in case the ones that you're playing start to die out as well. Number two, know your songs. This is absolutely critical. Make sure you and your band have practiced over and over and over again and have everything down, preferably to a click track too. That way you can make sure everything is perfectly in time and good to go on that end. But if you're going into the studio not even knowing your own parts through and through, then you're just wasting your own time and money. And this isn't just something that you as the bass player needs to know, this is every single person in the band. Considering each member is bringing forth their own creativity and own part to the song, you wanna make sure that you're not the guy who has to keep doing and takes over and over and over and over and over again, wasting everybody's time because you didn't practice enough and lock in that groove. Number three, make sure that your bass is set up and the intonation is as perfect as possible for your liking. This way you're not messing around with little Allen wrenches trying to do all the little adjustments. And this way too, when you get that fresh pair of strings with a perfect intonation, you're ready to rock and roll going straight into the studio, knowing exactly what parts you're playing, you have fresh strings and the intonation's perfect. So really it's all up to you. Number four, have reliable equipment. This is a big one. You wanna make sure that everything is good to go before you go into the studio because the last thing you want, again, is something shorting out, something going out of tune, something being not intonated perfectly. So if you go into the studio with your gear that's reliable and good to go, you don't have to worry about, maybe this cable's gonna short out. Maybe one of my patch cables between my pedals is gonna short out. It's one of those things where you go through every single piece of gear beforehand and make sure that everything is in tip top shape, at least to the best of its ability too. This is something where you think, oh, we're good to go, or it might crackle a little, but that's fine. But say you just played the absolute perfect take and you move just a slight bit and sure enough, it crackles just enough to make sure, well, gotta do that take all over again. You don't want anything like that happening. Make sure you're investing in reliable equipment. Now, reliable does not always mean expensive too. That's a really big thing. There are brands out there that make high quality and cost effective cables, such as Hosa, Daddario, Fender, Ernie Ball, and even Harley Benton. Just because you want your equipment to be reliable doesn't mean that it needs to be expensive. And finally, for number five, nail your technique. Make sure that you have practiced practice, practice, practice your parts over and over again. Whether it's heavy 16th notes with a pick and heavy distortion for the metal song, or it's heavy slap bass for that R&B song that you're recording for, you wanna make sure that not only the gear that you're using is reliable and at its best quality that you can make it, but also you as the player too. Locking in that technique is something that takes a lot of practice. And it's one of those things where just because you have band practice three, four times a week, doesn't mean anything. Go home, practice those demos that you guys made together. Make sure everything is locked in. Now those are five key ways to really be prepared before you go into the studio to record. But there's a couple little extra things I'd really like to throw into the hat too. First up, having something like this musician's toolkit is an absolute blessing to have in the studio. Just because it has everything you'll need inside of it to whether change strings on the fly or go ahead and do a quick setup. Next up, grab something like this fret wrap from Grove Gear. That way you can remove any unwanted noise. Basically, it goes around the neck of your bass and makes sure that there's no unwanted noise going through anything at all. On top of that too, if you don't wanna spend any money, just get a little piece of foam, 
fold it up and put it under your strings right next to the bridge. And that helps tremendously. Now this might not be for everybody. Some people can go ahead and just listen through studio monitors and play and record from there. But for me personally, I really like either having my in-ears ready to go or my headphones too. Now these Shure SE215s I've owned for got eight, nine years, I think by this point. And they've been absolutely incredible, both for live purposes and for recording too. And then for headphones, getting something like these Bear Dynamic DT770 Pros is something that's really, really nice. Not only do they have a really nice EQ mix and response to them, but they're super comfortable too. So you can wear these for hours on end without your ears and your head feeling just like they're really cramped in. Now I know plenty of guitarists and basses that are perfectly fine going ahead and recording in front of studio monitors with the studio engineer right next to them. And that is awesome for them. Just for me personally, when I'm playing through my parts, I have to have my in-ears or headphones on. That way I can sort of just get in the zone and focus solely on the song and what I'm playing. And this last one to me is absolutely crucial. Eat healthy snacks, healthy snacks throughout the day and drink water. Don't drink beer till like the last hour of the day. If you're recording eight, 10, 12 hour sessions, multiple days at a time, you need to make sure you're as hydrated and focused as possible. You can't bog your body down with beer or just junk food the entire time because it does weigh down on you. It makes you tired and makes you lose focus. And at that point, what's the point of you being in a studio recording songs, paying money for that, if you're not gonna be there and be fully attentive to it? And so overall with all these tips, they have absolutely helped me throughout the last God knows how many years of recording bass that I've been doing, just because it helps make sure that you're focused not only while you're there, but way beforehand. You're not last minute going, wait, what am I supposed to be doing? What notes am I playing? When you go in as focused and prepared as possible, it'll make for the best sessions. And before I sign off for today, I just wanna leave you with this. Go in knowing your songs, try and be as prepared as possible. Be open to little changes on the way. Things are always bound to happen. It just matters how you react and bounce back from them. And then you just wanna be as hydrated as possible. And of course, have fun. You're recording music. One of the most beautiful things on earth and one of the most exciting processes to go to is recording. It's one of those things where it's like, man, I'm having an absolute blast. Take all that in, take that energy in and just enjoy yourself. But of course, do your best to be as prepared as possible and just have fun along the way. But y'all, thank you so much for watching today and joining us. And let me know what tips you guys have before you go into the studio. I would love to hear what different things I'm either missing out on and that could really help me or really what I just completely skipped over. But of course, thank y'all so much for watching and we'll see y'all next time.